Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books. Today I am shooting a nine books to take with you on a camping trip video. I like a specific type of book when I'm camping. There's like three genres that I tend to read and that would be horror, sci-fi, and fantasy. For me those are my favorites like when I'm gonna be laying in a hammock and I want to really dig into something. So I have three recommendations from each genre and we're gonna just talk about each book briefly, why I think it's good for a camping trip, and uh, enjoy the beautiful scenery around me here at Mount Charleston. I have a vacation vlog video that's going to come up as well, just a little bit about what we did up here for the weekend. We're just staying two nights. This is like a little getaway from the Las Vegas heat. All right, so the first genre we're going to talk about is kind of like horror, dark, not necessarily always traditional horror, but everything has kind of a dark vibe to it. So the first book that I have on the list is Near the Bone, Christina Henry. This is a perfect book if you want to be creeped out by the campfire at night. It is about a young woman named Maddie. She lives in a cabin. It's super, super isolated and she lives there with her husband. And they have kind of a strange relationship. Like almost it gives you this cult-like vibe, but it's just the two of them, not really a cult. And he's very controlling of what Maddie does. He doesn't let her leave the cabin without his permission. He's very much like, I have to be here to protect you all the time. And as the story unfolds, we find out that there's this bear-like creature that's up on this remote mountain with them. It's bigger than any bear that anyone's ever seen. I think they describe it at one point as the size of an elephant. And it's very stealthy, very quiet, able to climb trees, do a bunch of stuff that like really massive bears usually cannot do and it's killing things in really gruesome ways like hanging dead animals from the trees and it's just this really creepy ominous vibe both in the relationship that maddie's in and what's going on with this larger animal on the mountain so last night when i was laying in my hammock i started reading this actually and i think i read about 175 pages last night in the dark in a hammock on the mountains and it definitely gave me that really creepy spooky vibe which I love. I think that's so much fun. It kind of reminds me of being a kid around the campfire and telling ghost stories. So if you're going camping and you want something to freak you out a little bit, Near the Bone by Christina Henry. After that, I have All of Us Villains, which is by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. That's this guy right here. This is kind of dark fantasy dystopia uh, with some horror elements in it. It is basically, there is a magical world. So it's a modern world, cell phones and technologies and things like that exist, but it has magical principles. So essentially magic exists in the form of curses. And these curses are like rings that people wear that have power harnessed in them to create these spells. Um, so it's not like an, an innate magic within a person, it's a, a created type of magic. And what happens is that there's seven old families who were cursed at one point and every 20 years upon the blood moon the families have to send one family member into an arena to fight to the death so kind of think hunger games except there's magic and it's a little different than the hunger games i feel like the characters in the hunger games are really sympathetic in this case these people are not sympathetic at all each character is kind of a bastard and like they're just really unlikable like they're supposed to be unlikable and in some ways you end up liking them because they're so unlikable like they're just anyways that's hard to explain but seven people that are unlikable difficult bloodthirsty looking to score honor for their family and if they win this blood tournament um they essentially are given this huge amount of power their whole family can harness this huge amount of power for the next 20 years and so there's one family that historically has won more of these blood tournaments than anyone, but there's lots of people looking to upset him or upset their, their champion. And it's a really interesting book. It leaves, on, leaves off on a really big cliffhanger. So if you're not a fan of cliffhangers or like you're one of those people that gets really impatient when you read a cliffhanger and have to wait, the second book of this is not out yet. So maybe wait and pick it up when the second book is just about to drop so you don't have that like, ah, oh, what's gonna happen feeling like I do right now slash horror is Book of Night by Holly Black. I haven't actually read this one yet. I brought this on the trip to read and enjoy if I have the time to. It's a shorter book than the other two. And this, as I understand, is Holly Black's first uh, 
entry into adult fiction. I think she usually typically writes more YA fiction. I know she wrote like the Cruel Prince series, which I've read the first book of, and um, I know there's a couple others, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Anyway, so Book of Night was her first uh, adult fiction. It was a book of the month book. It's been receiving a lot of hype. I have seen some mixed reviews since its publication, but it sounds like a really cool book. It has to do with people called Glomists, who are magicians that manipulate shadows to peer into locked rooms, strangle people in their beds, or worse. Glomists guard their secrets greedily, creating an underground economy of grimoires. And to rob their fellow magicians, they need Charlie Hall. Now she's trying to distance herself from past mistakes, but bartending at a local dive, she's still entirely too close to the corrupt underbelly of the Berkshires. Not to mention that her sister Posey is desperate for magic, and that Charlie's shadowless and possibly soulless boyfriend Vince has been hiding things from her. When a terrible figure from her past returns, Charlie descends into a maelstrom of murders and lies. Determined to survive, she's up against a case of doppelgangers, mercurial billionaires, Glomis, and the people she loves best in the world, all trying to steal a secret that will give them a vast and terrible power. So, I don't know about you, but that sounds like totally my cup of tea. I love fantasy. I love it when it's dark and, like, questionable morality and grimy. And then my third entry into dark so I'm really looking forward to getting into this. I'm curious to see like if I love this or if it's a little underwhelming. So the next three recommendations are in the science fiction category. Now, I don't know that a lot of people necessarily think of science fiction when they go camping, but the reason that I kind of like sci-fis for camping is because A, a lot of them have kind of that like creepy vibe, not necessarily as dark as horror or as graphic necessarily, but a lot of them kind of have that disquieting feeling and also a lot of them are deep and complex so like when you have time to lay in a hammock out in nature and you're relaxing that's like for me the perfect time to really really dig into a nice deep complex book so uh these three books are books that are on my sci-fi list that i'm hoping to read soon definitely um some pretty notable authors in the sci-fi genre so first up i have artemis by andy weir this is about some pretty notable authors in the sci-fi genre. So first up, I have Artemis by Andy Weir. This is about a woman on a lunar colony named Jasmine. She goes by Jazz, and she's in debt. She's been in debt, and she's just looking for something to help her kind of break free from this debt. You know, she doesn't want to be rich. She just wants to pay off the debt that she owes, be able to eat a little more than just flavored algae, to subsist a little better than she's doing. She gets tied up into what is something a lot bigger than she initially anticipates. And it puts her in a position of becoming this likely, unlikely heroine from Artemis, which is the first lunar colony. Sounds really interesting. I haven't actually read any of Andy Weir's books yet, but I do own three of them. I have Artemis, The Martian, and I forget the name of the other one. But I have three and I'm slowly working my way through them and really looking forward to reading them. As I've said, I've heard really good things about Andy Weir's writing. So there's that one. And I have The Martian by Andy Weir as well. And this one is about an astronaut named Mark. Six days ago, he became the first person to walk on Mars. And then disaster struck, wiping out his whole team, his equipment, a lot of his supplies. He has no way to get in contact with Earth. He's essentially cut off. And the odds are he's basically going to die because by the time that NASA could even send anyone to rescue him, it'd be years and years down the road. So he starts working to support his life. Uh, he starts trying to build a little garden to, to subsist off of, to find ways to communicate with NASA, to do whatever he needs to do to stay alive. And I'm really excited about this. I think especially like if you kind of nerd out like me over like the Mars rover images and the stuff it's finding on the surface like kind of having that idea that we're actually already exploring Mars and then you get a book like this where it kind of takes that concept and builds upon it. Um, one thing that I've heard that is really good about Andy Weir's writing is that he uses a lot of modern science in it so it's not like all made up and fantastical necessarily it's kind of grounded in, in elements of reality so I'm really looking forward to getting into this one as well. And then the third book that I have is the newest release by one of my absolute favorite fantasy slash sci-fi writers, and that is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. So I recently read the whole Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin, 
which uh, she did something unprecedented with that series. She won a Hugo Award for every single installment of that book. So for three installments of that book, she won a Hugo Award for each one for science fiction, which no other author has ever done, period, point blank. I loved the Broken Earth trilogy. It was so creative and unique. It had this very dark end of days vibe, but with such a unique concept. So I'm just so excited to get to dig into this one. I found this at a used bookstore and I was actually beyond excited because I just found out like literally right now that it's a signed edition. I didn't know when I bought it that it was signed. It, they didn't display it as a signed edition or anything. So I'm super excited about adding this. So this one, the concept that I understand is about the soul of a city and it's about New York in this particular case. So every great city has a soul. Some are ancient as myths and others are as new and destructive as children. New York City, she's got six. So that doesn't really tell me a whole lot. I'm super curious. New York is one of my favorite cities. I've visited many, many times. So the concept of exploring the soul of the city through some of the people that are living in it is super interesting. And because she creates such a unique concept and unique worlds, I am just beyond excited to see what she's gonna do with this. All right, and our final genre is fantasy. So same thing, maybe fantasy isn't the thing that you first think of when you go to the forest. But for me, there's a couple of reasons, some of them similar to sci-fi. A, again, when I'm relaxing in a hammock and I have all the time in the world to read whatever I want, I love to read something that is complex and layered and building on a world that, you know, I'm really going to immerse myself in. So fantasy is great for that. The second thing is a lot of fantasy is set in nature, like, you know, often a faraway kingdom in the forest or by a river, you know, that natural vibe for me, like it kind of helps me to immerse when I'm like out camping, reading something like that. So for me, this is maybe my favorite genre. I really enjoy bringing a good fantasy book with me. The more layered, the more rich, the more complex, all the better. So these three are some of my most anticipated at the, at the time being. And the first one I have is Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. This is a little bit older, not like crazy old or anything, but this is about the legend of Camelot and it focuses on a different character. Her name is Elaine. So Elaine is with, you know, Morgana, Guinevere, Arthur, all of the people, all of the legends. And Elaine has the ability to see impressions of the future. And she kind of creates prophecies around her visions. She knows what's coming to claim them. And she kind of has to basically decide how far she's willing to go to change the future and save Camelot. So I'm really looking forward to this. I love this cover. This was a June 2021 um, pick for Book of the Month, and yeah, I love a good Arthurian legend. I am looking forward to, to diving into this. And I have A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. This is a more recent Book of the Month. This was February 2022. I got this in my Book of the Month box. Um, again, I love really complex fantasies. This one sounds like it's going to be pretty complex. There's a world called Cadence, and there's two characters named Jack and Adira. So someone summons the spirits in the river, and they're told basically that these kids are being, being kidnapped by spirits. So Jack and Adira have to work together, once sworn enemies, and now they're going to have to work together for the betterment of their society. And I believe a conflict comes up with a faraway land that has been kind of their rival and sworn enemy. Brecken, the Brecken clan on the west, sworn enemies of the Tamerlanes, kind of their rival and sworn enemy. Brecken, the Brecken clan on the west, sworn enemies of the Tamerlanes, um, opens communications for, for the first time in centuries. Timing suspicion, but the Breckens, who have always been more in tune with the spirits, may hold another key that will help Jack and Adira. So between these missing girls and the situation with the Breckens, Jack and Indira are thrust into a situation where they're just not sure what's going on. As they come close to like uncovering the secret that's happening, uh, they start to learn much older and darker secrets about Cadence that are lurking beneath the surface and threatening to undo them all. So I'm really looking forward to diving into this. There's a lot going on. Like I said, two different storylines. We have the kids being captured and kidnapped and the situation with the Breckens. I've heard really good things about this and I'm looking forward to getting into it. And finally, probably one of the better fantasies that I have read in the last few months, The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. This book, wow, I devoured this book. 
It's a, it's a bigger book too. I want to say it's like, I don't know, 460 pages. It's not huge, but I mean, it's definitely, you know, a nice thick meaty book. And it is so complex, such like well-rounded characters, interesting storyline, so much action. You just can't put it down once you get started. This book takes place in the Middle East and deals a lot with Middle Eastern folklore. Kind of takes its influence from Arabian Nights and definitely gave me some distinct Aladdin uh, vibes in the very beginning of the story. Essentially, there's a prince who, Mazin, who is kind of kept locked in his house. His father really babies him because his mother was murdered by a djinn. The king has this just desire to kill off all djinn in the revenge of this, this boy's mother's death. And it's turned into just this weird bloodlust. Um, and excessive killing both from the jinns and the jinn returning you know retaliating against humans mazin's half brother is also like the head of the 40 thieves and an assassin of jinns and he's like pretty much the most notorious jinn killer that exists he has a right hand woman in his 40 thieves who is also a main character and then there is a young woman who becomes central in the story. Her name is Luli Almazari, and she is the midnight merchant. So essentially she runs this market that is full of like black market it items, specifically things that are like enchanted or magical. Um, and she has a bodyguard that works with her who is a djinn, but he looks like he's able to present himself as a human. So most people don't realize that he's a djinn. And they, make their living by finding these ancient artifacts and then selling them in this midnight market. So eventually this bloodthirsty king captures Luli, the midnight merchant, and he wants to send her on this epic journey to find this magical lamp. This magical lamp is said to be inhabited by the queen of the jinn, and that the holder of this lamp will become all powerful. So Luli is forced into a situation in which she cannot avoid going to track down this lamp. On Luli's journey to find this magical lamp, she brings her djinn bodyguard, except in his human form, because again, this murderous king wants to kill all djinn, so she doesn't want him to get killed. And then Aisha, who is this member of the 40 Thieves, she's the only female, she's the right hand man to Omar, this murderous prince. And then Omar is sent on the journey as well to make sure that Luli does what she's supposed to do. So it's quite the epic tale as they go and search for this um, lamp. There's Ifrit, there's Jinn, there's all sorts of Middle Eastern folklore incorporated. And I have to say one of the things that I really, really love about this book is that Arabic words are incorporated, names are incorporated, um, but even like spelling in Arabic is incorporated. So one thing that I was really happy about here is like, there's a couple points where she spells things out. And instead of anglicizing it and spelling it in English, she spells it in uh, Arabic. So I took Arabic for a couple years in college. Um, I'm not fluent in it by any means because it's such a complex language. I mean, it takes years upon years to really gain fluency. But I do know the alphabet. I do know basic words and things. And so like when she was spelling things, it was just so nice for me to hear her spelling it in Arabic. Sorry, motorcycle driving past behind me. Um, so like Amir's name, she spelled it Aleph Mim, you know, and goes from there instead of A-M-I-R. And um, it was just a nice incorporation. It was easy to understand if you're reading the book or listening to it on audiobook, but it's that nice touch of like not modifying it to fit English. Such a good book. This is the first in a series of three. I haven't seen a release date for the second book, but I am anxiously awaiting it. And if you need a good book to dig into on a camping trip or at home on your couch or wherever, highly recommend it. And one bonus book, if you have kids and you have a if you have kids that enjoy reading, um, I have this book, American Stonehenge by Mike Goldstein. I don't read a lot of kids' books because I don't have kids, I'm not a kid myself, um, and for whatever reason it just doesn't end up on my radar as much. They do get authors that reach out to me via Instagram and social media to see if I'd be interested in reading and reviewing books. I do try to be pretty particular about what I accept, especially when it comes to kids' books just because, like I said, I don't read a lot of them. and. I don't want to review something that I'm not going to enjoy or I'm not going to get, so I'm, I'm pretty cautious. Uh, Mike reached out to me about reading American Stonehenge, and this is probably like a middle grade level or maybe even slightly higher, and it's about 
a young man named Jimmy and Jimmy adopts Andrew from the Humane Society and which I love by the way shout out to Mike for including a adoption of a dog from the Humane Society there are so many deserving dogs out there please please adopt don't shop sorry there is my soapbox for the moment anyways Jimmy adopts Andrew and finds out that Andrew is actually like a mythical being that has existed for thousands of years like he has memories going back to the ancient Egyptians and he has all sorts of knowledge of history archaeology it's really really interesting and Jimmy and Andrew can communicate through their minds like they can hear each other's thoughts it's a really unique relationship between boy and dog and Jimmy's parents are both archaeologists and there is this discovery up in Oregon of these ancient ruins that are similar to Stonehenge so Jimmy's father is like look we're gonna go up to Oregon and explore this American Stonehenge you know bring your dog along and we're gonna go and it turns into this epic adventure this book is just so sweet and wholesome and it's got really cool illustrations um, it's just a really enjoyable book like you can see there's lots of different stuff going on there's some mythical creatures it's just a lot of fun I was so excited about this and one of the reasons that I picked it up is like a one of the main characters is a dog B it's travel related C it gets into archaeology like all sorts of different things that I really enjoy so if you have a kid or you like reading like middle grade books highly recommend checking this one out I've been seeing lots of good reviews for it as well on social media so a little bonus uh, to throw in there anyways these have been the nine books plus one bonus book that I brought with me camping that I recommend maybe bringing camping with you or like if you're just gonna dig into a good book by your pool or at the beach wherever you know I hope you've enjoyed these recommendations and I hope you'll consider checking out some other videos in the future. If you like this one, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Let me know in the comments down below what's your favorite genre to 